Proud to be joined by members of our leadership team, Senate leaders. Hey, folks. Folks. Um, I'm proud to be joined by members of our Senate leadership team, Senators Durbin, Murray, and Stabenow. Now, earlier today, I met with Leader McConnell and top Senate appropriators. Leader McConnell proposed the bipartisan Senate DHS bill, which has $1.6 billion for border security, plus a $1 billion slush fund for the President to use for his radical immigration agenda. After the meeting, I, call, I spoke to Leader Pelosi, and I called Leader McConnell and told him we would not accept their $1 billion slush fund and that our offers to fund the government remain. Let me be clear. The Republican offer today would not pass either chamber. We Democrats have made two reasonable offers that could earn overwhelming bipartisan support in both the House and Senate. One, pass the six bipartisan appropriations bills and a one-year CR for the Homeland Security bill, or alternatively, a one-year CR for the remaining seven appropriations bills. The President said last week he would be proud to shut down the government. We Democrats don't want to shut down the government. And as for the idea of what uh, Sarah Sanders Huckabee said, they could get wall money from NAFTA or some other uh, 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 part of the government, they need congressional approval. They're not getting it for the wall, plain and simple. Now, where are we? The ball remains in the President's and Republicans' court to accept one of our common sense proposals. Now, on another matter also of great importance to American families, and that is health care, a ruling last Friday from a federal judge in Texas put the future of the Federal Affordable Care of the Affordable Care Act at great risk. Every American should be aware of the fact that if the ruling is upheld, the entire law would come crashing down causing nothing short of chaos in our health care system and calamity for over 100 million Americans. We don't believe that the ruling should stand or will stand. But the danger it poses is so great, we can't simply hope for the right result. We should do something quickly to allow the Senate to be heard and persuade the courts not to tear down the health care law. And, in fact, we have added weight because the judge based part of his decision on legislative intent. So, we must act, and we hope we can act in a bipartisan way. Senator Manchin has a resolution to authorize the Senate Legal Counsel to defend the Affordable Care Act on behalf of the Senate. We intend to force a vote on this resolution as soon as possible. Every Republican who claims to be for protections of pre-existing conditions ought to vote aye on the resolution. It's the quickest and best way to ensure the court case against the Affordable Care Act does not remove the protections so many Americans need. I urge my Republican colleagues not just to talk the talk and say they care about these things, but to walk the walk and join us in our intervention against this awful court decision. Senator Durbin. Thanks, Chuck. It's been six years since we started this journey on criminal justice reform. We've reached a moment where it is an historic possibility, both substantively and politically. We have a bill before us on the floor that will address criminal sentencing for the first time in almost a decade, and a bill which will address the issue of prison reform for the first time in, in the memory of man and woman. This is an opportunity that uh, we can pass a bill this week before we leave for the Christmas vacation. Uh, we have bipartisan support. Senator Grassley and I have brought the bill uh, to the floor along with uh, Senators Lee and Booker. We are anticipating three amendments by Senator Cotton. We are prepared to debate and vote on those amendments as quickly as possible. The strongest group in opposition to the Cotton Amendment the association and organizations representing the victims of crime across America, who have all come out against the Cotton Amendments. 
What Senator Cotton is attempting to do in his amendments, they find, violates the basic trust they had as criminal vict victims when they were given the rights under law to be informed. Roughly 90 percent said yes, but 10 percent said no. Senator Cotton is going to try to violate that legal principle and force information on those criminal victims who have asked not to be informed of what happens to the criminal defendant involved in the perpetration of their crime. We believe we can defeat all three amendments and bring this bill to a vote. I hope that we also hold open the possibility of bipartisan amendments before we close this that I think will make it an even better bill. But we have an amazing coalition backing us now. We want to get it done, and the sooner the better. Senator Murray. Well, thank you. Well, once again, thanks to very reckless Republican politics on health care, families are again in this country very worried about their coverage. Right in the middle of the holidays and looking ahead to a new year, people with pre-existing conditions are once again wondering whether the protections that they rely on to afford coverage will stay in place. Moms and dads who breathe the sigh of relief that a child's broken bone or a chronic illness wouldn't mean financial ruin are again having to hold their breath. Women who no longer have to pay extra on top of their insurance just to get birth control are wondering whether they'll once again have to pay more for a basic part of their health care. And vulnerable young men and women who are under the age of 26 will lose their coverage uh, on their parents' policy. Let's be clear, if this goes into effect, this latest blatantly partisan legal threat is the whole ball game when it comes to health care for tens of millions of people in our country. There could not be more at stake. Now, we heard a lot about health care from President Trump and Republicans in Congress heading into this past November. We heard they fought to keep pre-existing con condition protections, even that every single Republican in the Senate wanted to keep them in place. They insisted they cared about affordable health care for people they represent. Well, based on the health care sabotage we have seen from this president and his party, I find that hard to believe. But if Senate Republicans want to reverse course and protect families from this latest health care threat that they've created, there's a very simple way they can start. Instead of ignoring the unbelievable harm this ruling would do if it goes into effect or introducing bills that won't actually protect patients and families, they can join the Democrats' resolution, make it clear that Congress never intended to throw health care into chaos. And the Trump administration can direct the Department of Justice to defend families' health care like it should have long ago. Democrats are waiting and we are watching, but much more importantly, the patients and families that count on us across the country have made it abundantly clear they are tired of reckless, harmful Republican politics on <clears throat> health care. And finally, I just want to say, uh, with just a few days to go before a completely unnecessary Trump shutdown right before the holi holidays, Republicans really have two choices. They can do the right thing work with us to keep government open and fund our national priorities, or they can stand with President Trump, who has said he would, quote, be proud to shut down the government to try to get American taxpayers to pay for his wasteful wall. This should not be hard. I hope we end this year without a completely unnecessary crisis. Senator Stabenow. Thank you. First, I want to congratulate and thank Senator Durbin for pulling together a coalition with uh, Senator Booker and others, a bipartisan group that's going to make a very important step forward with all of us supporting it on criminal justice reform. Secondly, regarding health care, you know, the American people have said over and over again their health care is personal, not political. That's why they engage in the effort to keep the Affordable Care Act, people from all over the country, and it worked. That's why people now are saying to us, what is going to happen? What are we going to do to make sure that they don't lose their health care? 20 million people plus, over a million in Michigan, will lose all of their health care if this court case is upheld. And everyone will be affected, literally. At least half the families in Michigan have someone with a pre-existing condition. 
over half the population are women that are infected, affected by whether or not we pay more and discriminate against for being women or whether our health care will be fully covered. And in so many ways, health care, all of the things in the Affordable Care Act literally affect every American. And that's why we are joining with the leader, with Senator Manchin, in saying the U.S. Senate, along with the U.S. House, and frankly, the White House needs to do everything possible to stand up for people's right to have health care. Health care is something that is not political, it's personal. And the other thing that we are asking is that we come together to move forward, to fund our government. It's pretty basic. The ability to continue public services and do it in a bipartisan way, and we're ready to do that. Look, if Leader McConnell uh, puts a short-term uh, CR on the table, it's something we'd very seriously consider. Leader Schumer. Some of the early suggestions are that that may go through February. Is that uh, That's the leader. It's leader. Our choice, our preference is the two proposals we've made. If Republicans can't agree to those and propose a short-term CR, we'd certainly very seriously look at it, for sure. Um, but as to how long it is, will be up to Leader McConnell. The president told you he'd be proud to take the blame for a shutdown. Why do you think he changed his mind I think, you know, his basic position was untenable. And uh, we were surprised when he said it in the White House. The American people don't want it. And most of his Republican colleagues don't want it. Leader Schumer, what about the idea that when you exchange these offers, when we get up right up against the deadline, this is typical? Leader McConnell said, you know, you guys rejected his offer. Isn't this always the kind of the way oh, it has to go? At this this is, we had an offer out on the table for days. Mm -hmm. Ours is the only offer that I know that could pass both houses. Are you willing to You know, our, our job right now is to get the government funded without a wall. Uh, we have had no discussion about judges, none. Nope. Next. Nope. Secretary Mattis doesn't seem it's a good idea, and I sure wouldn't want to take the money away from the troops. Senator, okay. Senator Schumer, Senator Thank Schumer, you. Is there any way to salvage this offer from McConnell by tweaking it, by making the fund A more $1 billion dollar slush fund is not what is right, what the American people want, and it couldn't get votes in either house to pass. Senator Schumer, would you rule out a package of judges at the end of the year? We have had no discussions on judges. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.